Hello, your th Year 3. Welcome to your maths lesson today. It's Thursday. Let's check you've got what you need. So your maths book, a pencil and a ruler. And just don't forget to look out for the listening slide or the activity slide so you know what to do. OK, I'd like you to jot down the date and LO in your maths book, underline it with a ruler and then have a go at the following activities on the slide here. Pause the video and do that now. Well done. You might have noticed a pattern or something similar in these first um, two calculations. So we had four times three, that was 12. And we had something very similar, four times 30. The three was just 10 times bigger in this case. So that was 120. We added a zero on the end. Next calculation, we had three groups of 12. 12, add 12, add 12. So we could have written that as 3 times 12. You might have written it as 12 times 3, and that would be fine as well. And this last one, we've got 15, add 15, add 15, add 15. That's 15 four times, isn't it? So you could have had 4 times 15, or you might have had 15 times 4. Tick those if you got those correct. OK, I'd like you to listen for this slide. Each shelf has 24 rolls. We want to find out how many rolls are there in total. Now this week you've been learning with Mr Lewis about your partitioning, haven't you? And how to use that skill to help you calculate questions like this. So I just want to talk you through it. This method is great for when we want to calculate mentally for the future. So I've got my number 24 and I'm going to partition it first to help me. Now we're really good at that, aren't we? So we've got two tens, which is 20 and four ones. OK, now we know that there are four shelves. So I'm going to multiply 20 by 4 and that gives me 80 because I know that 4 times 2 is 8. And I can just make it 10 times bigger. Now, because we've got those four shelves again, we need to times the 4 by 4. 4 times 4 is 16. I've done part of the problem there. Now, have a think what I'm going to do next. Yeah, so now I need to do some adding. I need to work out what 80 add 16 is. That's 96. So I know that 4 times 24 is 96. And there are 96 rolls in total. That's one way of calculating this problem. OK. Let's use the same calculation again and look at another way of doing it. This is a better way for when um, we're not able to do it mentally and we're writing it down to help us, which I think for most of you will be the more effective way. And we're, we're all going to be using this method in our maths today. So we've got the same calculation, 4 times 24, and I've written it out um, in my place value chart using Dean's. I've got 24 four times. OK, now I'm going to write out this this calculation in my formal written method as well, because we are going to be using that method today. So I've got 24. I'm going to write as best I can with this pen. It's not always going to be perfect. So you'll just have to bear with me. 24 times Four. OK, I'm ready to work this out now. So just listening to this one, just listening. Right, four times four. Let's multiply the ones first. Let's check that stem sentence. First, multiply the ones. Does that remind you of when we've done the stem sentence before, but with adding and subtraction? Yeah, I hope so. So first, multiply the ones. 
and now I've got four times four. I can count in my fours. I know that four fours are 16. Now, this is the problem. We know from our former Witten method before that we can't have 16 ones in the ones column. There can only be nine or less, can't there? So what are we going to have to do? Let's rub that out. That's not going to work. Now, when there are more than nine ones, we need to exchange. And I'm hoping you're going to have remembered that from when we've done formal written method before with maths. When there are more than nine ones, we need to exchange. So I can't have my 16 all in the ones column. I've actually got a 10 in there, haven't I? So I'm going to write it like this. Exactly how we would have done it with our um, our formal written method in addition or subtraction. And let me show you what's happened here. So we have had to exchange 10 of these ones. That's 4, H, 9, 10. And we've added in a 10 here. That's what we've done. So we can see we've got six ones left and we've got a six in our ones column. Now, the next part of this calculation, then multiply the tens. So I'm now going to look at the tens here. I'm going to multiply two by four. I've done my four times four and now I'm doing my two times four. Now the two we know represents 20, but I'm just going to do two times four to help me. Two times four I know is eight. And I mustn't forget, I've got one here as well, another lot of 10. So I've got eight tens and one more, nine tens. I'm going to cross it out because I remember to do that part and I'm going to put a nine here. Okay. And we can see over here we've got two, four, six, eight, nine tens. Can you see how we've done that? So if you want to pause the video now, that's useful just to have a look at that and, and just spend some time um, going over what I did, then you can do that now. Otherwise, we'll move on. OK, I'd like you to have a go at this one now then. So um, we've got a new calculation this time and I'd like you to start with the partitioning method. OK, um, it's good for mental maths, but it's also fine to jot some of this down. OK, so we've got 25 times three. That's our calculation. Use my uh, blanks here in the number sentences to help you. And this is your activity slides. So you're going to have a go at this one. Pause the video and do that now. OK, let's go through the answers and then we're going to have a look at the other way of calculating this um, particular calculation. So you needed to partition 25 first. You should have got 20 and 5. Right now we're timesing this by three, aren't we? We've got three lots of this. So my first calculation and yours should have been 20 times three is 60. So we know that two and three is six. We made it 10 times bigger. Your next calculation should have been five times three. We time the tw tw times the 20 by three and now we're timesing the five by three. That's 15. And the last little bit that we have to add these two um, these two totals together. So 60 add 15 is 75. Tick those if you got it right. If you didn't on this occasion, don't worry, we're going to look at the other method now, which you might find more useful for you. OK. Here we go. We're going to have then that same calculation, 25 times three. This time, I'd like to see you having a go at drawing out the tens and the ones as your real story. That's where we draw pictures. And then having a go at a math story um, in the formal written method. Use these stem sentences to help you if they are needed. OK, so I pause the video now. Have a go at this, please. Um, use your ruler where you need to draw the lines. Do that now. 
OK, let's go through what you needed to do. So in your real story, you should have drawn 25 three times. I'm going to do that now so it's really clear for everyone. Bear in mind my pen isn't very easy to use with my mouse. And my lines might be a bit wiggly. Right, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So I've got 25 three times. OK, my calculation here should look like 25 times three. Ooh. There we are. OK, now, if I use my stem sentence to help me, it says first multiply the ones. So I'm going to do three times or five times three. Now, I know that that totals 15. But 15 is more than nine. So I'm going to need to exchange. Now, I know that my 15 is going to be written like this. Let's just see what it now looks like over on the real story side. So I'm going to exchange 10 ones for 110. I know I've got five here, five, 10. And I'm going to add in that extra 10. That is what we have done over here. Can you see that extra 10 there that we've got here? Now, then multiply the tens. So I'm going to look at my three again and I'm going to multiply the tens here. I need to do two times three and I must remember that extra one underneath. So I've got two times three is six. I've got one more that's seven. Let's get my black again. Seven lots of ten. That's Seventy. If you look over in the real story again, we can see we've got seven tens. So my answer is 75. Tick those if you got those correct. Again, if you didn't, have a look at what went wrong with yours. And remember, um, remember that for next time so that you can do it correctly. OK. This time I've got a listening slide or activity, so I'm going to give you a choice. If you feel pretty confident with this now, I'd like you to have a go at this one before you listen to me talk about it. If you're not feeling confident yet, have another listen to me doing one, OK? And then that will help your confidence when you get going. So I'm going to give you a choice. Pause the video if you need to, if you're going to have a go, or keep playing if you're going to listen to me do another one. Now, I want to know, what do you notice about this place value charge? There's something different with this one. Have a think. Yeah, so this time we've got a hundreds column there. Sometimes our, our calculations, we're going to need to exchange them into a hundreds column. So I'm going to show you exactly how to do that today. So our calculation is 5 times 32. Okay. And you can see underneath, I've got a real story and a math story to help me separate my thinking out. Now, instead of drawing these in, I've got some pictures here, so I've got it in for us ready. Now, this time it just looks a bit different as well because I've got place value counters instead of deans. You could choose to use that today in your activity if you wanted to instead of the deans, that's up to you. We're seeing the same thing, aren't we? So I've got 32 five times. Now, I'm going to have a think about my math story now. Something times something. Mm. Now, I'm going to partition this 32 to help me. Um, I'm going to start with the 30. So I know that if I partition that number 32, I've got three tens, which is 30. I'm going to times that by five first. Five times 30 is 150. And then I'm going to times that two by five as well. Five times two is 10. Now, next part, I just need to add my totals. So I've got 150 add 10 is 160. Now, 
That was the partitioning way, wasn't it? Let's now look at um, the other ways of doing it. So this time I've got my numbers ready in my formal written method to show you. And I've got, you may notice, a hundreds column here because on this occasion, I'm going to need to exchange to my hundreds column. When you do your calculations in a moment, you might want to add on a hundreds column if you need to. Sometimes you will and sometimes you won't need to. Right, what do we have to do first? First, multiply the ones. So, looking in my ones column, 2 times 5, 10. I know that straight away. 10. And we can see on my real story grid, we've exchanged um, 10 ones, haven't we, for 110, because 10 is more than 9, and I can't have 10 all in that ones column. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. I've exchanged that for a 10. And we can see that in my calculation here, I've got um, that exchange 10 there, and I've got nothing now in the ones column. Right, what do I do now? Then multiply the tens. So I now need to do three times five, that three stands for 30, doesn't it? Um, three times five, I know that that is 15, and I've got to remember that one more 10 there, 50, 16. I've got 16 lots of 10 here. Now, like before, I can't have 16 lots of 10 in the tens column, can I? I can't have that. But what's 10 tens the same as? Mm. 10 tens is the same as 100, isn't it? So I'm going to write... 16 like this and then I've got my hundreds there I've got one lot of a hundred in that column now so my answer is 160 let me just show you what that looks like on our real story as well so we have exchanged 10 tens haven't we this time for a hundred because we've got more than nine tens in our tens column we can't have more than nine tens so let me get rid of um, 10 of them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And I've exchanged them, haven't I, those 10s? I haven't subtracted them. And I've exchanged them into 100. Can you see how that real story matches my math story here? OK, if you got that right on your own, amazing. Um, if you were listening, that's OK. Um, just um, make sure you've really spotted those key, uh, the key sequence of what you have to do ready for your turn. Right. Now, for today's maths, I've got some tips for you. If you need to replay parts of this video again, if you can't remember what to do next, please do that. You can go back and you can replay um, how to do it. Think about the stem sentences that will help you as well. So keep those in your head. First, multiply the ones, then multiply the tens. And if there are more than nine in a column, you need to exchange. Yeah. And if you'd like to, if that were, if, if you'd find organising your math like this easier for you, a bit like what I did in my slides, you can write real story and math story where you've done the LO. Can you see that line down the middle? That's almost like the column in the middle of your book. So I would I would suggest with your maths book, you actually use the whole a whole page or whole whole bit going across and have one column for writing the real story notes and one column for writing your math story notes. OK, so if you'd like to do that, you might want to pause the video and do that now. OK, let me show you the questions. So this is your activity. Um, so pause the video on each slide and let's have a go.
This is the extension for just those few children that are ready for that. And now we will do the answers. So get your um, either your sharp pencil ready or your pen ready to mark. Here we go. Brilliant. Well done, year three. Well done for persevering with that. Um, brilliant. Please post your work on Dojo. Make sure you do that. I will have a good look later and um, I'll let you continue with your day. See you next time, year three.